Let me ask you about a few um, interesting things that you've said on previous podcasts that you've done recently. Um, so I heard that you said um, the most important thing for you is to build technology which lowers gaps of inequality. Yeah. What, what, what do you mean by this? So uh, technology is friction. I mean, it, it's the ultimate. Tech is the ultimate inside old boy network school tie. It is the ultimate. It's who you know. It's not what you know. And if you have the right people that can string together some stuff, you know, the tech can actually work for you. But actually, it's a very closed and very exclusive system. Uh, it's very difficult. There's no such thing as chat GPT, build me a Revolut competitor offering. Not yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're working on that. Yeah. Um, and, it, and, and, and so as a result of that, um, there's too much what you know and the nuance of this, and there's too much specialization. So I keep thinking back to my time in Africa. I had 10 years uh, in Johannesburg, and I fell in love with the continent and that potential. You had the fundamentally people that weren't born with some of the privilege and weren't born with some of the advantages we all have in, in Europe and other places. But you have this fervent energy that tomorrow's a better day. And tomorrow's going to be a better day. And you know, we had so many people that worked in some of our businesses that didn't have formal education and training. They didn't have, like, I hired people sometimes that were like guarding cars on the street and they became development managers or IT infrastructure consultants later on. We would train people in some of the businesses that we were doing. What we were trying to always do is to give them a better playing field in which to launch themselves into their next thing, just to, 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 to drop that inequality. What we realized then is that the technology was the ultimate kind of factor. It's still too difficult to use tech. Right. And I think, again, going back to the car analogy, there are at least 30 to 40 independent computer control modules in an average modern car. Most of us do not know what they do, how they work, or whatever. My car had an interesting issue the other day. Check engine light went on, so I downloaded a little app, connected a little USB thing, and then it told me I had 47 control computer modules in my car. Yeah, and then it finally told me that there was a, a bus uh, underrun caused by a fuse in so like it did this huge amount of diagnostics but that was cool because an idiot like me stuck a little thing and then the answer came out to change fuse 17 it's burnt out and that meant that it was no longer a 500 pound trip to the garage and everything else it was like almost like the car could almost self heal itself and even if the part was defective you could literally just unplug that black box, put in a new black box into it and close it down. That's my inspiration for ideas in the modern world where you've got AI generative technology, you've got technology of modules that are open source that people just understand how they work. But if the construction and assembly of those can become dynamic and intuitive, um, we can design ideas on paper really easily, right? Because paper is a frictionless mechanism. If you had an idea that you just took out on a big A3 piece and you said, okay, here we're gonna have a customer and the customer's gonna pay us some money and then we're gonna have this module that identifies the top three things for that customer that want to do and then we're gonna have this module that books it and then we're gonna have that module that bills them and invoice it. Like if you could do it at that level of simplicity that each box flowing to the other blocks was just automatic, you could actually build a business on paper. Yeah, in theory, yeah. In, th in theory, and, and I notice a skepticism that you apply, which is exactly right. My passion is about taking that in theory and making that in practice. So if you can instruct what you want in box one, and then box two, and then box three, and then box four, I will have the technology that builds the interactions and the relationships between those boxes automatically done for you. And by the way, we'll apply the compliance of the police out looking at your four boxes to make sure that we've told you that it is legal for you to do what you're suggesting. You can do it. Here's how you do it. By the way, there's privacy that applies, so let's fix that. And by the way, there's something else that applies that you didn't know of, so let's fix that too. And it was all being done automatically. And we have that expectation in most things in life, but we still have this fear that tech is that last frontier of scary. And you know what, what I'm passionate about is making tech almost as simple as that drawing blocks on a piece of paper that just automatically will somehow magic themselves into existence. Now that magic process requires a huge amount 
of technology, of engineering, of compliance, of intelligence models, deterministic models. It requires a huge amount of work and evolution. But at the fundamental synthesis is, is taking an idea for, at the human level that says, hey, I want to do that and making that idea frictionless. That's really what it's about. I know I've given you the 10 minute version, but, but that's really what we're passionate about. That's what we have everybody at Phoenix One working on. Cool. Something else you said, um, don't let your wins get to your head and don't let your losses get to your heart. I love that one. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you, as a, you know, as a fintech or as any startup entrepreneur, you're going to get a lot of no's and you're going to get a lot more no's than you're going to get yeses. Um, I think I'm at investor pitch 70, sure, roughly. And if I look at how much I color code my diary, so if I look at in my diary how much red I've got for, for, for investor, how much green I have for customer, um, how much yellow I have for investor management. So like, when I look at my color codings, I realize I'm spending a lot of time in individual meetings, getting a lot of no's. And if I let that get to my heart, I might very quickly lose my enthusiasm and lose the passion for what it is that I'm doing just because I keep getting people saying no. And some of them are diametrically opposite. So the guy from Monday will say, ooh, you have way too much reliance on your partner channels. You need to sell a lot more directly. And I'll be like, okay, fine. And then Tuesday's no will be, whoa, you have nowhere near the reliance on your partner channel. You need to do so much more partner sales. You don't need to do anything by yourself. Sure. So now we're both wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you, if you take a look at both of those opinions, they'll cancel each other out at minus one. Yeah. Right? But you just think to yourself, okay, fine. So not for you, not for you, not for you, not for you, not for you. And that's the way that you think about it. It's not, we're not right. It's just, we're not right for you. Yes. And that's the advice I wish I could give to those entrepreneurs. It's, it takes a huge amount of persistence. Not everybody just goes and has a quick idea and now they're Mark Zuckerberg a year later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? The, the system is rigged. It's designed against normal success. And even by the time you do get to success, it's designed to have taken your idea from 100% yours to maybe you'll get 20% of the business by the time it's all said and done and you exit it. Right? That, that, and 80% of people will have come in at different phases, at different risk profiles and different appetites, but your idea got to see the light of day, but you probably got a lot of no's beforehand. And the, the corollary to that is, don't let your wins get to your head. Nobody likes arrogance in this world. So, so you have to keep your team motivated and you, and you should celebrate your internal wins. But nobody likes the vaporware business that says, you know, congratulations, we, we've signed a massive global partnership with Xprog when it was actually a meeting. Sure. <laughs> you got a meeting with a guy at Xprog that said, yeah, that might be interesting. And you're like, oh, major partnership. Mm -hmm. So the, the keeping it one level less bolstery, I think. I don't manage to do that every time. I get sure, excited sure, about sure. wins. Me neither, but it's good advice to live by. Yeah. We try.